Aren't those lovely? Look at all those colors and shapes. So artistic. Right. It must have taken so much talent to create such a piece. Well, you're right there, Gina. But you can also create art using math. Math and art? You mean we can get such beautiful things in mathematics? You're biased, Tito. You just say that because you're a math teacher. Well, that's true. But there's really art in math and vice versa. But how can that be? Math is an exact discipline while art is not. It is often subjective. Why don't I fix both of you, Samariana? Then I'll tell you why there's math in art. Okay. Here, look at this. Here are more of the artwork my math student did. And all of these were drawn by students, following some math rules. You mean we can also produce artworks like this? Sure. But first, you must train yourself to see more of them closely. Why don't we uh, go through the works and try giving them names? You know, naming the works by what images they remind us will help us appreciate art. And of course, math. Hey, a star! This one's a cat. Diamonds. An angel. A yak. Look at this. It looks like a series of spiral staircases. There are four staircases. Wait, Tito. Are you sure these are made by hand? Yes, math is an art. And at the same time, it is a study of patterns. Mostly or often numbered patterns. Hmm, let me see. Let's start with these circles. These are called points. Do you notice the lines in the circles? They form a series of regions. The lines intersect or cross one another in order to form as many regions as possible. Could you count the number of regions in each circle? In the first circle, there's only one region, and in the second circle, there are two regions. If we have three points and we connect them, their line produces four regions. How about the fourth, uh, Gina? Eight regions. There are 16 regions in the fifth. Are you sure there are 16? Go count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Yes, there are sixteen. Do you think the pattern will continue? One, two, four, eight, sixteen. Yes, we'll get 32. Are you positive? It seems that the number of regions produced from the points on the circumference of the circle can be thought of as results of the power of 2. Thus, you conclude that... Why don't you do the next circle and distribute 6 points around it and tell me if you indeed get 32.
30? But it seems certain that there will be 32 because the number of regions double each time. Let's not be too certain. Sometimes things are not what they seem. Actually, it's 31. You forgot to count the one in the middle, see? So we get 31. It is tempting to conclude that connecting six points each to each will produce 32 regions. However, no matter how the other points are located on the circle, there will not be more than 31 regions. However, number patterns can sometimes be found by looking at the differences between consecutive terms And this approach is what we call the method of finite differences. Okay, let's try some more. Continue finding the number of regions that can be produced when we add more points. 7, 8, and 9. Well, how did it go? How many regions are there when you use uh, 7 points? We got 57. 8 points. 99 regions. And 9 points. 163. Let's go to other artworks. What do these remind you of? The circles are of the same size. The radii are of the same length. What do you notice? From the leftmost circle to the rightmost, the interior circle in each seems to get smaller. Right you are. But do you notice the pairs of numbers inside the braces? This is like skip counting. The 36 refers to the points around the circle. The number below it refers to the number of points skipped, as in skip counting. Thus, for this exercise, we skip 5 points to go to the next, and to the next. So, starting from 1, we go to these points on succession. Tracing a path, thus, 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, 26, 31, 36, 5, 10, 15, until you get back to 1, or until you complete the star. Now, try this. Okay. The tree starts with point 1, then goes to 8, 15, 22, 29, 36, 7, 14, 21, until we get back to 1. Now, do 36 points with 11 numbers skip and 36 points with 13 numbers skip. See if you can do it. Can you also predict how will it be for 36 points with 17 numbers skip? Put all the results side by side. Thirty-six points with eleven numbers skip, and thirty-six points with thirteen numbers skip. Remember this? This was the one you admired earlier. It has 96 points around the circle. Can you now produce these different star traces? Let's start with this.
The star with the most ray is 96 points with 49 numbers skip or 96 points with 47 numbers skip. These two stars are actually the same because 49 and 47 add up to 96. Try making it. How's this, Tito? Hmm, let's see. Hey, you're getting the hang of it. Here, look at this. It looks like a heart. This is called an epicycloid. This heart-shaped epicycloid is appropriately called a cardioid. This pattern, the circle is divided into 36 equal arcs and numbered as shown. Chords are drawn from any of the numbered points to the point 2 times its value, where 2 is the multiplying factor. Thus, starting from point 1, draw chords 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 3 to 6, 4 to 8, and 5 to 10, terminating with chord 35 to 70. Try it! Hey, it does turn into a heart! Now, by changing the multiplying factor to 3, we obtain this figure. It looks like a giant clam. No, it looks like our kidney. This two-cusp kidney-shaped curve is called the nephroid, which is also an epicycloid, generated by a rolling circle that is half the radius of the stationary circle. Here, let me try. Here's another one. What does this remind you of? Christmas lantern. How about this one? A spiral staircase. But how could we make such beautiful art? Easy. Through math, of course. Here's what you do. First, draw an angle. Second, mark off equal lengths on each side of the angle. Third, connect number points from the two sides which add up to say 20. So 8 and 12, 9 and 11. Here are other artworks I want you to see. Hey, these look like people. And these look like animals. And these artworks are made up of tangrams. Tangrams? You are familiar with jigsaw puzzles, right? The outstanding recreation of this type that started during the Renaissance is the Chinese puzzle game known as tangrams. Tangrams, seven pieces, cut from a square as shown are called tans. They are the smallest shapes and are used to make an infinite variety of forms or flat figures. In creating the figures, a heavy demand is made on one's geometrical intuition and artistic ability. How do we get these shapes? Do we just cut out five triangles, one square, and one parallelogram? No. The tans are obtained by slicing a square to produce the seven pieces. All corners are multiples of 45 degrees.
No one knows when tangrams originated, but the earliest reference known is a book published in China in 1803. But most scholars believe the game originated in China about 1800, became an oriental craze, and then spread rapidly to the west. Here are other artworks produced by rearranging the seven pieces. Do you see the figures suggested by the captions? Yes! I have some more tangrams here. Why don't you try making more shapes out of it? This sure is fun, Tito Mark! Not only fun, I also learned that there is math in art, and art has math. Right, Gina? Now, whenever I look at art, I will not only see the beauty of it, but the math within it. Let's make some more figures!